What is good, Grey Gang? We're here today. We're still doing coon trapping, okay? Coon, opossum, whatever you want to call it. Chicken predator trapping is what it is. And so now what I'm coming to you for is we've not exactly had another chicken die that we know of, but we have a few other interesting things. Okay, so you know how I said I was going to reset the traps just in case something did wander down here? Well, something did just that. But if you're looking at the trap, you're like, well, I mean, there's nothing came here. Nothing was here last night. You would be wrong, okay? And before I show this to you, I do want to let you know, this happens sometimes. Like, this is just part of it. But, uh... Well, there's a, there's a possum foot just came out. You know, kind of casual. Just a foot. But like I just said, guys, that's casual. That happens. And whenever I see something's foot caught in the dog proof, there's usually only two things that could have happened. One, we caught the critter. His arm was in the thing. And then some other bigger predator, meaner predator, maybe a coyote or bobcat, came around here in the same area, actually ate him, but only left the foot because the foot was actually in the trap. But I'll be honest, guys, I don't think that's the culprit today. The second option, what could have happened, is because this could have been such a small possum that this trap could have been overpowered for. Because you got to keep in mind, this is a coon trap. This is a full-grown coon trap built for giant coons which like to eat stuff and destroy stuff. And it's not exactly built for maybe a yearling possum or, well, as you can see, this guy's not that big. Like, that's a little bitty foot. This was a pretty young possum, so it probably just, well... Y'all get the point. Now, because of this foot, I have good news and bad news. The good news, the possum's okay. He's not dead or anything. He's just living with one foot. Like, he's still alive. He's fine. Now, the bad news. The possum's still alive. He's only got one foot. He's still good and he's still alive. That's a good thing if you're like, work for a PETA. But then if you work for me, he's still got one hand. And one hand is all it takes to kill a chicken. Okay? So that's not okay. That just gets me fired up, guys. We're ready for him. Come back, buddy. And I will say this. It happened once. I don't think it'll happen twice. The odds are ever in our favor. That shouldn't happen twice. But that's not the only thing we trapped over, well, the little time that's elapsed. We got this guy. This dude's a ground squirrel. I didn't even want to trap you, but I mean, I guess the moral of that story is get your paws out of my trap. But it's okay, guys. We'll make good use of this guy. I'm going to go feed him to my crawdad. This ground squirrel shall not be wasted. But because we do know that the predators are back, they're scouting this place pretty hard. They're hunting it now. As we see by the possum foot, he's still alive, obviously. I'm going to set back these traps pretty hardcore, and I'm actually going to do something different that I've not done, and it's actually use this. I'm going to be trapping with this. Now what you do with this soup can is it's for a dog proof trap only. But what you do is you slide the soup can over the dog proof. And that's simply it. That's all it does. But it actually does something really important. And there's actually a bunch of reasons why that right there is better than that right there. And I'm just going to go over them. Number one, I've never seen somebody excited to steal a soup can. Maybe you're trapping in a public area or somewhere that's just got a lot of foot traffic. People that like to steal stuff. That just happens sometimes. Here's what you do. You sit this over top of it and they're not gonna steal a soup can like who wants to do that nobody and the second reason this is good is for keeping unwanted things out of the well the dog proof let's say this you have some dog food in there what's going to get in there that you don't want well one thing is thinking groundhog or whatever that thing is a little ground squirrel and i do want to say this my uncle dick just come by and informed me that those have actually been quite a pest so it's not as innocent as we thought what they've actually been doing is digging holes bruh they've been getting in them chicken holes digging holes and eating their food and i mean yeah i guess that's not too big of a problem but it's also starting a hole that a coon can crawl through later but back to the soup can it can keep those out let's say you don't want to catch them we don't really care but i'm gonna put that over it anyhow it can keep the rain out that way i don't have to reset the trap whenever it rains and three the biggest thing that it's going to keep out in this particular area is some chickens like you can see under my mule there's chickens they're free roaming not all of them are but a few of them and what they've actually done is every morning if i hadn't caught something that night they'd come eat all the dog food out of my trap so i'd have to reset it and that kind of gets expensive and the third reason which i mean it really can't hurt it's a big shiny thing. Coons love shiny things. I mean, of course, if it smells good, they're going to come to that anyhow. But, I mean, wh what can a shiny thing hurt? And then some of y'all are sitting there saying right now, Kendall, dude, I don't want to do that to my trap line. It'll make my traps look trashy. Bro, that's exactly what you want it to look like. That's why coons are also known as trash pandas. They like to eat garbage. That's just how they are. In the coon trapping community, this can right here, like, it's actually a pretty popular deal. But in the trapping community, they call it the can trick. And I'm going to be honest, guys. We're the Grey Gang. That sounds a little dull, don't you think? So I, Kendall Grey, coon trapping extraordinaire, I am changing the name of the can trick to the Colombian Consultation. Hence the name of the title, the Colombian Consultation Coon Trapping Trick. Or, 
for short, the CCCTT. If you want your very own soup can, you can go to kennelgrade1.com slash shop. Not really. We don't sell soup cans there. But we do sell awesome merch, which you should pick up. We sell fanny packs. That can be used for trapping, and which I will use for trapping this fall. Or hunting, or fishing. Or just walking around the beach, if that's what you like to do. And on the website, we have little gray grippers like this right here that go on the back of your phone. And some bracelets. So if you want to support the channel, go ahead, buy some merch if you want to. But for real, guys, if you want a soup can, go to anywhere that sells food. This one used to be corn. And right now, I'm going to send you over to Kendall about two hours ago, whenever he actually made these. That way, you can learn how to make your own, which it's not that hard. But before I send you in the past, I just want to let you know, guys, like, if you like this trapping content, obviously hit the like button, but I want I want to be a real YouTuber, guys, and I may tear up during this, but I want to stay true to myself, and I don't want to keep anything from you guys. I want us to be as honest as possible, and I just want to say this one thing, guys. If you don't like this trapping content... I really don't care, because I'm going to do it anyways. You feel me? But I have a pretty good feeling you're liking this content. And if you do like the content, just hit the like button, because I'll let you know. It definitely helps out the video, and it's going to help us grow. Hashtag Road to One Mill. We are the Grey Gang, and if we're about to get that Go Play button, we got to start hitting those like buttons, guys. We got to get them up there. So smack that like button as hard as you can, and pass Kendall, I'm beaming them up to you. Okay, future Kendall, right now I'm back to show y'all how I made those uh, little pop can looking outfit things for this. So here's what we're fitting it to. This is a Duke dog proof trap, Duke being the brand. Most dog proofs are all the same size, but just keep in mind with a different brand, your can size and shape could vary. So first of them built one, let me show you exactly what it is. Now my tripod right now is literally two batteries, okay? We got two six volt batteries as my tripod and we're in my basement. So just ignore the cinder block walls because I'm not in a bunker. I promise I'm not hiding from anything. Now I'm just going to be honest with you guys. I've not done this before. I've never put a can over my dog proof, but I know it works. I mean, I know a lot of people that does it. I've seen a lot of examples that done it, and I just know it works. Like, it's a good concept. There's, It makes sense. And so originally, whenever I took a soup can like this and tried to set it over top of it, it didn't really fit too great. Like at all. So I made a few modifications to it. This is what I came up to. As you can see, the main thing, I've drilled holes in it. You don't have to have holes in it at all. Most people don't even drill holes. I've just done this. Just in case I have some honey in there, they'll get some scent out of it. But as you can see, this is not a perfect circle. This is not a perfect circle. I designed it that way, bent the can a little bit. That way, it slips on good, and it's not going to take much for a cooner possum to just lift it off. But now we have to do that with this one. It doesn't fit. The first thing that I'm going to have to do is you see this little rim inside, this little bitty rim? We've got to get some pliers and mash that down. Pretty easy. You just bend them down all the way around. And whenever you do that, we're good. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And I'll get back to y'all as soon as I'm done. And just like that, I'm done with that step. Now, let's see if it fits. I think it does. Yeah, it fits, but it's kind of rough. And a coon, a coon probably won't give up, but a possum might give up if it's too hard to open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shape it into this. Now, it's a round. This one is not round. Let's get started, I guess. First thing I done was I kind of squeezed it a little bit, made it an oval, and now I'm just going to make this side flat. Pretty easy. Just bend it a little bit more, get you a good pair of pliers here, and you shouldn't have any problems at all. And now bend it just a little bit. That there's perfect, guys. And there we go. That's it for that one. This one, I actually drilled like four holes in the bottom and quite a few on the sides. Like I said, I've not done this much and I'm kind of still experimenting. So for this one, I'm going to get me a drill. Just one solid hole right there in the top. And that's all we're going to do. Back to you, future Kindle. Okay, passengers, welcome back from your space travel. Hope you're not feeling a little woozy. But now it's time to get real. Let's set these things. I'm coming in here, same procedure, boys. We're going to put them down in there. Mm, eat that up. And here's where it gets interesting. Then we come in with the Colombian consultation. Set it over top of it. We're not done, guys. That's just the base. We still got to come in here and get this honey. This is the stuff that really makes the magic happen. Or at least in my opinion. And right now, I'm about to use another tripod. In this case, it's going to be the other Colombian consultation. Set you right there on top of that. And I'm just going to come over here ripping up some, some of this honey sauce, baby. Best sauce in the game. Pour it right down in that hole. And that's what's really going to make it good, is if it goes straight down in that hole. Okay, looks like it's not exactly doing what I wanted. But I'm just going to come in here... Set it right down on there. Just juice it. Oh, man, I forgot. I only had one thing of honey. 
Okay, well that's kind of a problem. I'm just gonna set that back right there and act like that didn't happen. Maybe even scoop some of that up because uh, I don't know if y'all just heard what I said, but I forgot that I only had one pack of honey for two traps, so I'm kind of in trouble now. We're good to go. Now let's go set the other one the same exact way. And it is right over here on the other side of these cages. I can't wait till this fall, whenever it's like legally time to trap possums. I'm gonna be doing all kinds of stuff, guys. Like This is gonna be insane. We're gonna dump some of the dog food in there just like this. Mm, get some of that good stuff in there. That's fine right there. We'll just scoop it off. Leave some on the bottom. Put us some of the good stuff right down there on top. Then come right over here. Set the can right on top. And I'm going to put the remaining honey that I have right down in that hole. Hopefully that'll work. Oh, wow. Now my crock is a tripod. I'm telling you guys, the 21st century is awesome. Anything can be a tripod. Right there. Mmm, look at that yummy stuff. And just for kicks and giggles, I'm just gonna lay this right there. I mean, it's shiny too, so it'll probably help. And so, tonight, will we catch the predator that has only one arm now? I don't know. You'll have to come back next video to see. I'm pretty sure we'll have him, because if he came here and lost an arm, pretty dedicated creature, if you know what I mean. What's up, Greg Gang? Thank you for watching Kendall Gray. Don't forget to go buy some merch at Kendall Gray 1 slash shop. Hashtag Jesus, hashtag Greg Gang.